So like we said, we're going to do the NV 1800Q. I just want to bring up the chat so I can just keep track if someone does join us. Move that out of the way. Okay. So we're going to do the NV 1800Q. This is the biggest sewing machine, apart from the combination machines that Brother has uh, to offer. And this one, if you add this one and the 800, you get the NV 26. I'm oh, sorry, NV 2600. So this is part of the combination machine, but it's also available on its own. Just for today, we're going to look at. Um, this the on-screen manual accessories that's included and again just cleaning the machine but i know i think by now you know how to clean the machines but for video purposes i'm still going to do it so the accessories that is included in the machine is the zigzag j foot the monogramming foot overcasting foot zip foot blind stitch and your button fitting foot and also your button hold foot you also have a needle set that has 7511 needles, two of them, and two 1940s. Um, that's a normal 1940, and then two ballpoint 1940. That's the gold color coded. You also get a two millimeter twin needle. You have four bobbins, uh, seam ripper, cleaning brush, eyelid punch, and you get a screwdriver, you get a normal large screwdriver, an L-shaped and a disc-shaped screwdriver. You also have your horizontal spool pin. You have your large, medium and small spool caps and a thread spool insert. And then you also get a net, a knee lift, your foot controller, a little accessory packet. That grid sheet is when you want to draw your own stitches and then move them into the my stitch design onto the, on the machine. And you also have your manual and your quick reference. But with this machine, you get quite a few optional um, extra accessories. If it has a little asterisk with it, it means it doesn't always come with this machine. It is subjective to the country that you buy the machine in. So that's very important. Sometimes people will phone and they, they'll tell you, but I didn't get all my accessories. It's because some of them are only available in certain countries that come as an included, but all of these come as an excluded accessory. Just wanna grab them in the right order. So first you have your echo quilting, or free motion echo quilting foot, just a, it's a little plastic one. Then you have your, oh goodness, dropping it here. Then you have your free motion quilting foot C. These are all ones you get with the machine. You also get, no, you don't get the quilting foot. Yeah. So that's one you don't get in South Africa. I'm not sure. Yes, I'm sure. You get your walking foot. It's the F033 N. You get your quarter inch foot with a guide. We don't get the one without a guide. We get the one with a guide with the machine, which is yes. Then you have your sewing guide. Mine is in my packet. We don't get the side cutter with this machine, but you do get it, get it with the 2600. We get an open toe foot. We don't have the free motion quilting open toe O. We have the first one of number two, which is the C. You also get a non-stick foot with this one. You get your stitch guide foot P and you get your adjustable zipper with this machine. So that is always very important because sometimes you get some of the optional extras with the machine and sometimes you don't. So if people ask you, you can just let them know. And that's also very important. I'll just close the packet so I make sure everything stays together. Okay. That needle plate um, is is a is already on the machine. It's your straight stitch foot and needle plate set. No, that's for some that's where your bobbin works. Sorry, that's for bobbin works. All right, then you get a separate needle plate Then just looking at the operational buttons before I move you to the machine the buttons run as follows so stitch the button number one is your start stop button button not bottom mm -hmm, sorry for that then number two is your reverse stitch button three is the reinforcement stitch so we're going to play a little bit with that one four is your needle position button this is one you can customize in your settings 
the thread cutter button five so to cut your thread and six is the presser foot lift button so this is very nice it's only available on this big machine in the combination 2600 and then seven is your speed control then just looking at the screen number one is your lcd screen it's a 9.3 inch screen yes then number two is your pivot key we'll play around with that one as well so it automatically drops your needle and lift your lift your foot so you don't have to use the lever to lift your foot three is the automatic reverse reinforcement key we'll play around with that one and three and four usually go together to automatic thread cutting key so i'll show you exactly what that does five is your stitch length key um, or your item selection key you'll see when we move around between the buttons six is your thread tension key so we'll play as, when we select a stitch we'll go into that as well seven is your settings and that's what we're going to go through and then eight is your manual memory key so you can override the default settings but then again you can also um, take it back to its default settings so you don't have to go save it in your memory itself you can just save it where the stitches is, is, is kept can I, I can almost say you'll understand when i go through that on the machine then you have your single repeat pattern this is the only one where it's available on the front screen of the machines the others you have to go into the um into the manual there that was 10 11 is back to the beginning so say for example you're busy with a stitch it stopped in the middle you or you stopped it in the middle and you just want the pattern to begin from the start that would be the key 12 is your pressure foot needle exchange key 13 is your memory so that your machine has a pocket and that's what i mean when you look at number eight you save at two different places if um, you select those two memory keys so you only have 15 slots for your memory uh, at, uh, on your memory key. Um, so once those are full, those 15 slots, you start overwriting over, um, over stitches. 14 is a reset key. That is if you've changed the, um, the settings of your stitch length at number eight, if you select that button, but I'll show you that in a moment. So you can reset them. 15 is okay 16 is your group of numerical keys so number one two nine and zero 17 is your back key 18 is your characteristic stitch keys so that is to get into the decorative stitches the character stitches 19 is to get into the decorative stitches so if you lift up the front cover of the um of your machine you'll see they are all grouped together so they're either character stitches decorative stitches or utility stitches that's how they are grouped so number 20 is to uh, select one of the preset utility stitches that's on your numeric um, keys or to retrieve a saved pattern and then number 22 lastly we have the stitch width key or your setting screen page selection key. So but they all sound very daunting until you just start playing with the machine. And so I'm going to stop this screen share and I'm going to flip the camera around so that we can see what's going on. Okay, do that. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to switch the machine on. When you switch the machine on for the very first time, it's going to ask you for, uh, um, for a language. Which language do you prefer? And then you can set that. We usually just set it to English. But if you have other um, languages that people speak, you can customize the machine for them. Then we're just going to go into reading the LCD screen first. I'm just going to use my pen to show around. So first you have your presser foot. So which one is it going to use? So it has a suggested presser foot that you can use. You don't always have to follow their guides, but for certain stitches, you will have to follow their guides like the buttonhole stitch. Number two is this, it's showing you which stitch is it currently going to do. It's going to do a left needle left position straight stitch. 
Then number three here um, is your is your um, stitch category. So which one of these, if you can see here, they are all grouped. Which one of the categories did you select? It will tell you up here. And then next with the number is the stitch number that you're currently busy with. Then you have your needle up down position. So if it has a line through the needle, your needle is going to end with a needle down. If the, this little stripe is underneath the needle, it's going to end with its needle up. Next to that, you have a little heart, a heart and a half. That is your single repeat sewing. So at the moment, it is on a repeat setting. If there was only one heart, I would do one decorative stitch or one utility stitch, or one design of the, of the stitch. And then next to it can appear if you're using your mirror image of your design. Let me quickly, if you select the mirror image, the mirror image comes up so you know you're busy working with the mirror image of the design. Then here at the bottom, you have your stitch width, or if you are on straight stitches, this becomes your needle, uh, needle position and you have 14 needle positions. Right next to that is your stitch length, and then you have your thread tension. So you would not, you don't have the dial on the machine itself to set your tension. You will set it on your screen. And because it has a block around it, it's all default settings. Any questions so far, Maggie? Are you fine with that? Tell me if I'm going too fast. Okay, correct. So screen settings is this one right here. It looks like a little book. You'll get all your settings in here. The first one will show you what, set, uh, what stitch you, are, you have selected. Or if you've written out a name with the character stitches, it will show here at the top. Or on the first page, here's all your pages. Going down, you can select your needle position. So as you can see, my needle ends down. And the reason I've set up my machines for that, if we can just grab some sewing thread, quickly thread the machine. So remember your thread must always come from the bottom. Go around. My foot is down. Just want to open it. Here we go. So thread always with a smooth motion and press the button down. Okay, so if I lift my foot and I put it down and I start sewing, my needle is going to end in the down right position. And the reason I leave it like that is now it's perfect if I choose to pivot or turn my fabric 90 degrees and continue to sew. I can stop, lift my foot and drop it and come back if you're not using the square feeding. So now I also say you can leave it in the downright position because if I press my scissors, it's going to cut my fabric and automatically lift my needle so that I can take the fabric out of the machine. So it's, it's mostly because we like we pivot or turn our fabric that we need the needle down. And as soon as you press the key, when, the, the cutting key when you're done with the stitch, um, it will automatically lift your needle for you. But again, it's personal preference. You set up your machine how you prefer it. Next, we have a twin needle. So if you are using a twin needle, it is best to come back to the setting and switch it to on. Because if I go do any of my decorative stitches, so it locks those stitches out so you don't break a needle by accidentally hitting the side of the foot. But if you come back next time and you realize but it doesn't want to take it or the stitch that you want to do, just come have a look at your twin needle setting. Because if I go back now, I can select any one of my decorative stitches. Okay. Just want to go back. So that's on page one. Page two is a quite interesting one. I love this. It's a width control. So if you are stitching with the width control, let me just see on which stitch I am. Let's just do one of these zigzag stitches. Okay. 
So I'm going to drop my foot and now this light goes green and I press this button for my machine to start sewing and this becomes, this is my speed. If I make it faster, the machine speeds up or if I slow it down, the machine really slows down. But this is my start stop button. Now, if I've selected, let me just grab the foot. Okay. But I don't have the foot controller connected. Okay. I'm knotting myself in the wires over here. Sorry. Okay. But if I change my settings to have the width control on in. this pin out of the way and now this becomes my width my stitch width previously if it's off you would see it's on a very low number at the moment it's also on zero but i have selection of changing it here on my screen but if Let me just move that back, say, okay. See, now it's on 6.5. If I move my slider, it changes to seven or changes to five or changes to zero, which would then just basically be a straight stitch. So now I can sew, I have my foot pedal and I can sew. Okay. So now as I'm sewing, I can change this and it's going to change the width of my stitch. Or I can come all the way down to one, which is basically nothing. I can just up it a bit. Let's do about two. There you go. Yeah. So you can carry on stitching and stop. And now again, my needle is down. I'm gonna press my scissor and it's gonna lift my needle. I'm just going to lift my foot and now you can see how I played around with the stitch length, a uh, stitch width. Stitch length is all the same. So next time you want to start sewing with your foot and it doesn't, or with your start stop button and it doesn't want to connect, you can remove your presser foot but it still doesn't tell me that I can start sewing. It gives me this error. It says change the speed controller mode to off. So that is in your settings. And if you in your settings, if you go down, you have to remember to come back to sew without your foot. Very, very important to remember that one. Then next we have our initial position. So when you turn the machine off and back on again, where's your needle going to be? Either in the left needle position or in the middle. This is as well where you customize your machine. I prefer the, um, the middle needle position, but I recently discovered that some people were taught differently on where to guide. So I was taught to guide on the one centimeter line and then have your needle position in the middle and that would give you a one centimeter. Huh? That people move the needle position to the left for them to have that one centimeter seam allowance. So that was quite interesting to learn that part. So again, customizing your machine on how you feel comfortable getting your seam allowance or just how you were taught. It's all up to you. Then we have elongation. Elongation works with, I'm just going to move up here works with stitch 19 to 35. Let this thing just zoom in. There we go. So on these decorative stitches here at the top, but only 19 to 35, this function works with um, works with the decorative stitches. Sorry, I have to get my words there. Let me just see this thing doesn't Let me just come back to us. Why it's making what it looks fun on the screen. Just want to see here what it looks like. Okay. 
why is it giving us this terrible view? There we go. Just have to get the right angle. There we go. So if I go back, it's in the sec, oh, not that one, it's in my secret group. Okay, cancel that pattern. And I want to go to the group, the second group. So my decorative stitches group two, and I want to select stitch 20. So now if I go into my manual, you'll see it shows the stitch I've selected on the very first position or, or tab. And now my elongation is on three. So what happens when you elongate it? Yeah, if you make it smaller, it's only, it's gonna open up the stitches. And we don't want that, or you're gonna work it all on top of each other. So here is where you can make it either longer or shorter. So you would either go up to five, you have a selection of one, two, five. It doesn't show it on the screen as much. That one did show it quite, quite nicely. Let's go to five. There we go. And see there it opens it up. You, on the uh, smaller machines, it doesn't show it. So this is great to be able to see it on here. So you don't have to always do a test stitch before. So, but that is how you would make those stitches longer or shorter. Then next we have thread density. I'm going to show you this one. So at the moment, my thread density is quite open. I'm specifically going to select stitch, what is it, stitch 14, which is the little heart. Let me just go back because I don't want to do combined stitches. I'll show you how to combine stitches in a moment. And I'm going to start sewing. Some decorative stitches, you can change the speed as much as you like. They do have a set speed. Okay. And as I mentioned earlier, we're going to look at this reinforcement button. So while it is busy running through the heart, and you don't want to just stop the machine because chances of you stopping it in the middle of a heart is quite big. So you can press start and press this button for the light to come on. This will then work, the machine will then work the, the design that it is currently busy with, finish it off, and you can press cut. So it's going to just finish the design you are busy with. Now you can see that is how the stitches look. On the screen, it looks, it looks pretty fine. I wanna see if I can come in closer. There we go. So you can see how open those lines are. It's almost like a zigzag line. But now, I'll just drop that in place. I'm going to go to my settings. And I'm going to change my thread density. You see those lines came closer. So it's got, it means they, that it upped the density. And I'm going to continue to work. So I'm just going to run through a few. If you're happy with the number of stitches you're doing, you press the button for it to finish the one that it's busy with. And press cut. I'll just get my hands straight. So now you can see the density of the, the two different parts. The top one is with the open density and the bottom one is quite closer together. So I just usually leave mine on. I love to have the more, the, the sorry, stitch. Character spacing, exactly what it says if you're doing characters. Sorry about that. You can open up the spaces or you can make it closer to, you can just open them up. You can't make them closer together, otherwise they'll work over one another. Next, we have a size selection. So size selection means when you're doing character, um, Character stitches, you can either make them a bit bigger or, or you can make them smaller. See, it gives you the, the big and the small option. Then we have what we call fine adjustment, vertical and horizontal. So this is specifically a stitch you would do or a setting you would use when you are working a decorative stitch. Sorry for moving you. Especially like, like the car or the bicycle. And there's one of the stitches that's just not it's not in the right place. It either moved it down or it moved it up. It depends on what fabric you're using and a bunch of other um, variables as well. 
So you have this stitch 80, which is the stitch you would use to test the fabric on the machine. So how would it work? So how, is your stitches going to line up as they should? So we're going to go into the first group of decorative stitches and select 80. And it brings up one and we're going to stitch and see what it is doing. So your machine is jumping from left to right. And now, of course, I did it over the zigzag. Okay. So let's cut, lift the foot. And as you can see now, it is both open. You look at the stitch this way. It is both open here. So my vertical is out and this the horizontal, these two don't align at the bottom. So they are out. So we're going to play a bit. So vertical, let's do negative one and my horizontal plus one. Let's see what it does. Let me just start on a new spot so that I don't go over my, my zigzag. So let's see what it does. So because your machine is working with square feeding, so it can work from left to right as well, or, or right to left, it needs to align, and this is going to be out again. Let's see which way it is out. And lift. It's almost doing the same. It's a bit closer. Let's see if we can up it more. See what that does. So this is how you would play around until you have the perfect setting to work any of your decorative stitches. Because those lines at the bottom have to align perfectly and be closed. Oh goodness, no, I definitely need to go into the negative. Yeah, the horizontal is coming right. Let's don't know the vertical is coming right the horizontal needs to move back so let's go to the settings let's move back with that one Nope, definitely the wrong direction. Okay, so we definitely had it right there on a three. But this is how you would test it, basically. So you'll play around these two settings and to get these two perfectly aligned. Let's do one more. Let's see. That one needs to go down. It needs to go closer. And our vertical is fine where it was. Let's see for one last time if I can get it properly aligned for this fabric. No. Very much out. Okay. So this is definitely a stitch you have to play with depending on the fabric that you are using at the time. But it's fun. It's fun to get the settings correct for your machine. Next, let me just also get my notes to the right place. So that I don't give you the wrong information. There we go. Next, we have the presser foot pressure. If it has a little block around it, like it does the number three, you are on currently on its default settings. So you can either up the pressure the higher the number goes or decrease the pressure the, lo the lower the number goes. <laughs> Sorry. So that is a very nice function. It's also um, built into our overlockers where you have the knob at the top, which you can increase or decrease your presser foot pressure so if you are working with a lighter fabric you would um, 
select something lighter or you can select a deeper, uh, a harder pressure for denims or leathers. But otherwise, working with a three works very nicely. I've worked leather with this machine, I've worked cotton with this machine, I've worked denim, and the pressure on three is perfect. Then we next we have pressure foot height. That means is how high is it going to lift? 3.2 is its standard. It's how it's high it's lifting at the moment. It doesn't lift that high, so you can up it to either 10, if you can see that it's quite high, 7.5 it drops, and then 3 it drops even more. So those are your three settings on your machine. Then remember also you have a little extra lift in your um, foot con and your lever there at the back. Next we have our auto fabric sensor system. So does it detect the thickness of its of the fabric itself? So when it is on, it will detect it with its an internal um, set the sensors and it enables um, fabric to be fed more smoothly. So the setting should actually always be on and just my opinion. But again, it is just my opinion. If you prefer to have it off and just run um, the fabric through, that is perfectly fine. Next, we have what is called free motion. So that is when you're doing uh, free motion quilting, you would come and select this mode to on so that the machine knows you're busy with free motion quilting. And then it would also drop your feed dogs. If I'm not mistaken, no, not yet. So the feed dogs, I think you have to drop manually. So if, when it comes to keeping, yes. So your feed dogs, I'll take you to the back of the machine in a moment. You drop your feed dogs manually. Okay. So we are not busy at the moment with three motion quilting. So I am, go up. I'm going to turn that off. Then you have what's called the free motion foot height. So the same as you can change the height of your free uh, normal sewing foot, you can change it for, come on, change it for your sewing or your free motion quilting as well. So one is a, is a um, your default setting, sorry about that. And when you go up, it will change it. Okay. And then your pivoting height, we'll play with that one. That one connects with this one right here. There we go, I see it doesn't like to be on, on another angle. So that one connects with this one right here. But you can change it how high you can see my foot is lifting and it's dropping down. So those are your three settings as well. So when you are busy sewing, let me lift it to its highest. See, it's on at the moment. So I'm going to sew, drop your foot. I'm going to start sewing. And now I want to stop and it automatically lifts my foot for me. Let me just choose a different... Let me just cut and it automatically lifts my foot. Let's just select a different, nope, that one. Cancel that stitch. Let's just go to five. No, I don't want 50, I want zero five. That's why it's not giving me the stitch I want. I also don't want that stitch. I want that stitch. Okay, so now I can drop my foot. I can start sewing. And as soon as I press stop, it will automatically lift my foot so that I can turn my fabric. I can press the green button again, it drop my foot and I can carry on sewing. So that is what that pivoting height means. And if I press the scissors, it's gonna drop, cut the foot, cut the, the thread and lift the foot. use sorry okay so we will just so that was the pivoting height so you can just decide how high you want that foot to lift then we have the buzzer so the buzzer is again if you haven't showed my machine beep 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 like the like the others so that's because it was off. 
now you can hear it gives you a little peep peep. So depending on what you prefer, that's the one to go with. And then we have light on. It is this light right here. Do you prefer the light to be off or do you prefer the light to be on? Very straightforward. And then lastly, we have brightness. This is the screen brightness. So it's going to make this, the black in your screen, going to make that lighter. See how it is disappearing. Or you can make it lighter. Or brighter. Make, turn it to its brightest. Then, there we go, then the last, second last page, we have reinforcement priority, those are these two, so you can activate it on the screen, so we'll go through that in the moment. Then you have input sensitivity, so that means is how hard do I have to press these buttons? To the input that I am giving it. Three is its default, you don't want to have to press it too hard. Um, these buttons are quite durable, but you don't want to uh, apply unnecessary pressure to anything that's not needed. Then we have our different languages. There's quite a few languages available on the machine. If you can read them, you can set the machine customizer to your language. Otherwise, we just go with English. And lastly, we have the version of the machine. This is version 1.7. You don't update this machine. You only update embroidery machines. The technician will make sure that your machine is, is on the version that it has to be. The sewing machines rarely happen that they update the machines. So we can go back. I want to show you this, this function here. If you select the scissors, you can see that both lights, just turn that one off, both of these lights turn on. But if you select the, the back tack button or the reinforcement, only the one comes on. So put, putting both on, I'm just gonna see if I can come in a little bit closer. Putting both of them on and then starting to sew. I actually want to come in pretty close right here for you so that you can see it's going to start sewing. Do the back tack automatically, the three stitches back and then come forward until I press the button again. And then it's going to cut my fabric. Going backwards and there it starts sewing forward. Until I press this button, it automatically jumps back, forward and cut. So I can just lift my foot and remove it. And there you can see Oh, come on. You can see the back tack and the coming forward again. If I just selected the back tack and not the scissors, it would only do a back tack for me. So forward, backwards, continue forward. I press my back tack, goes back, comes forward, and it stops. It doesn't cut. You then still have to go and press your scissors and then you can lift your foot yeah. or you can select all of them all of them have your scissors and your left foot on and it would lift your foot as well okay so I'm going to lower my foot let me just make sure you can see the button lower the foot start sewing goes forward backwards and then it continues until I press the button it's going to go back come forward cut and lift your foot it's a very nice function so you can really customize the machine to what you what you need and what your preferences are and also soon I'll show you how to um, join stitches together decorative stitches so let's say, oh, let's choose that one. Cancel the pattern. I want to choose something else. What did I say? Number 33. Love the stitch. Absolutely beautiful. So let's just stitch a row of that. So drop the foot. 
and you'll notice that it goes from left to right as well. You just have to keep the, the fabric straight. Uh, we'll do two patterns of these. You can just see them. This is quite a big pattern. As you can see, you cannot change the stitch width or length on this pattern. I'm going to select my button so that my light comes on. So it knows it only has to complete this one, one design. And as you can see, this is just an absolute stunning design. Love it. Something just to keep note of, I played around with these settings earlier. So just always remember to bring them back. Okay, because that does affect your stitches, if you can see. They should be right next to each other and they are not. So that is the reason. So always make sure you take it back to its original settings. Okay, so now we have decorative stitches and it is on a, set, on a repeat pattern. I'm going to press my... And I am going to put my name. And I'm going to go to my fancy characters. So you have three different fonts available with this one. So that is more of a, okay, let's say four, because that is Japanese. So you have block letters, cursive, varsity. This is those Greek letters, Japanese, and then you go back. So we're going to do cursive. And then at the top, it gives you on what number your alphabet letters lie or your special characters. So we're just going to write my name. So it is one, let's press zero one. No, zero zero one. Yes. But why did you take away my decorative stitch? Let's just go fetch it again. It is on a flower. It was stitch 33, single, and I want to add it because I played too, played around with pressing so many buttons. So zero, zero, one. So always remember to fill those lines before you give them the number that they are looking for. N is 14, so zero, one, four, zero, one, four. And you just enter the letters that you need. So zero, zero, five, run E. K is 11, so zero, double, one. And an E again is five, so zero, zero, five. Too bad I'm not 007. Anyway, and then you can add that stitch at the end again. So you can go into your stitches and select 33, and it will close it off for you as well. Now, something to always remember, it's giving you your a recommended foot that it wants you to work with. So I'm just gonna open up, I'm going to grab foot in, clip this one off, and pop it in here so it stays safe. You can throw that away, just like keeping all of our little parts. There we go. So foot in, which is our decorative stitch or your monogramming foot is on at the moment. We'll just go back a moment and you can just press start. And as the machine carries on, it will highlight the one that it is currently busy with. So remember, you just have to keep your fabric straight because it jumps from left to right. And when it's done with that, it jumps to the A. And it will jump to the end. It's busy with the E.
don't think I'm going to have enough space on my fabric. I'm going to have to stop it after this E because I don't have any more space on my fabric. Not so bad. Okay, but say for example something like that happens. This is actually a perfect example. Ran out of fabric. See, my size selection for um, my character stitches was set on large. If you wanted to write smaller, you will just select the smaller size. But say now for example, I ran out of fabric. Um, now I need to start. It still has that design to do, but I need, sorry, I need to start from the beginning. You'll press this button at the bottom and you're going to jump back to the beginning so you can stitch, sorry, the whole pattern in one go. Okay. So I also said we can save designs onto the machine. This is where you would save your design. So you'd go pocket enter. So there's already been just straight stitches. We were playing with the machine. We're saved on line one and two. So this one is going to save on line three. And you would just say, okay. And it's going to save it. So now I can take away this pattern. But then again, to go and fetch that pattern that you've just saved, there is your pocket out with your numeric keys. So the first one brings up these stitches that's on the, on the, the keypad and then pressing it again will go to your pocket. And you can scroll down and select OK and it's going to bring up the... the um... Oh, sorry for that. See, I'm taking everybody on a roller coaster again today. I'm just sorry, go up that. Sorry about that. I just jumped out of the holder over here. Okay. So, yes, that is to take out, take your design out of the pocket. So I always have a big fright when they just jump out. You can also decide if you want to repeat this design. So it can just carry on, carry on, carry on, carry on, or just do one. That's just my menu. Oh, go back, wrong button. Or you can mirror this design, but you can unfortunately not mirror the other designs. Oh, yeah, you're... There we go. Okay, so going back, why why aren't you clearing? There we go. I want a decorative stitch. I'm lying, a utility stitch. Let's go select stitch. Just a blanket stitch 58. I'm just gonna bring it up. So as you can see here now, those are my default settings. I know this because they have blocks around them and I can go play around and say, I want to make that bigger and also up my stitch width. So it's gonna make quite a long stitch and quite a wide stitch. But now I know for a fact, I am going to come back tomorrow and I have to do the same project and carry on with this stitch. I can then select here, this little diamond with the arrow in, and it's going to save these stitches, stitch settings for me. So if I turn my machine off and turn it back on, and come back and select select stitch 58. It's going to bring up this pattern, but with the settings I've saved earlier. But say you're done with a project, you're not going to use these settings anytime soon. You can restart the set the machine after the settings reset it, so it goes back to its default settings. So that is a very very nice function that we just absolutely adore in this machine. And then you can also lock the machine. You have to just lower your presser foot and now I cannot press any buttons so it's safe to remove your needle. To unlock the machine, just press on the needle again. So that, let me just run through my notes, is the machine and all its settings. Any other questions, Maggie? I actually only realized I went through them quite quickly before we go to the cleaning of the machine. Do you have one of these? I'm going to lift my foot so I can take that off. So I'm going to move this so that you can see that part. 
Again, your machine has to be turned off. And then you just grab your disc shaped screwdriver. And where's my brush? Here's my brush. So you only have to undo this one screw, or if you prefer, you can do all three. Just make sure you remember which two go on the rectangular plate and which two go on the, which one goes on the L-shaped um, plate. So always make sure this cover is on the machine. You don't want your screws to fall through and undo the screw. Come on, quite a long, not a very long screw, but there it is. And then you have to open up this cover to take this plate out because it slides towards you and then it lifts up. Then you remove your bobbin cover. We just removed the bobbin cover. You remove your bobbin casing and remove your bobbin. And from here, always make sure there is no threads within this, these little fluffs and take your brush and wipe it out. Make sure there's no threads within this tension plates over here. Clean it out at the bottom and then just start wiping. Oh goodness. Start wiping on the inside of the machine. Never blow. You don't want any of the parts to rust. And then again, very important, you do not oil the brother machines except for an overlocker. So just press the, the brush in everywhere and just clean your brush in, clean your brush before going back in. Now to put the bobbin casing back in, on your bobbin casing over here, you have a little triangle, white painted triangle. And just behind your screw, you have a dot on the, the bobbin plate, or just behind the, on the plate, that's part of the bodywork. The triangle in the circle has to align and then you know it is into place. There is not a big play when you're trying to move the bobbin case around. Then you just drop this one flat onto it and push it backwards. Close this cover because it helps keep that plate in place and replace your screw. There we go. You don't have to use excessive force when tightening these screws. It's just funny because I cannot really work with my left hand. I'm right-handed. There we go. So it's tight and that is all you need. And that is maintenance on the Brother NV1800Q.